Fit to see you again. How have you been? I really would like to know how things gone. It's been uh, years since we've talked like this. And I'm sure a great deal has happened to you. So if you would fill me in a little. Well, I, I've gotten married since last time. When did you Of course, immediately after our last interview, I was hospitalized at UCLA. I got married in December 1958. And since then, I've left the state. And I have two of my children with me. And things are just fine. You're still married? Yes. 58. Two years and four months. Well, that so far beats any previous record that it's uh, mm -hmm. quite a change in that regard. What kind of a man did you marry? Just a quiet man. He's, he's uh, 24 years old. And he's an uh, electronics designer. And he goes to school. He's just a nice man. Uh -huh. And you have two of your children with you. Yes. They've been with you I since have you two got married. Boys, uh -huh. They're six and seven years old. Mm -hmm. You moved away from this area. Uh, about uh, we left in June of '59. We moved to his home in Michigan, and we stayed there 18 months. And by his home, you mean what? Uh, he was born and raised there, and we bought a home close to his parents' home, mm -hmm. where he was born and raised. So you were living in the same small the neighborhood, uh, next yes. door, practically. Yeah. What was it like? Well, I was. Oh, I enjoyed it at first. It was real quiet, and we lived out in the country, about 11 miles from town. And we had our own lake. We have about 180 acres there. And we have a large house. And the kids could run for miles and not get out of the backyard. <laughs> Didn't have to worry about being hit by a car. It was very nice, very quiet and peaceful. I liked it. But? It was snow a lot of time. It was winter about nine months out of the year. And the people are different there than they are here. Yeah. What do you mean by that? They're just different. They, uh, you they mean don't say specific? bad words and they don't... Uh, it was a dry county, they don't drink and... and they talk different. I don't know. I can remember the teacher calling my husband and telling her, Telling my husband she couldn't quite understand what my oldest boy was talking about because he came to school and said he just didn't dig all that jazz <laughs> and she couldn't understand it at all. I didn't like the people. They seemed, I don't know, narrow-minded or something. I don't know. Square. Square. <laughs> they didn't swing at all. No, not, it isn't that, not really. It's just that. Well, because of my background, and because I've done so much, and I don't think, I don't think 10 years from now, uh, I'll be able to live without something coming up, something in my past history coming up. Oh, my children's birth, I mean, they're both illegitimate. Uh, there's always some reminder, and when you have people that are so narrow-minded and that can't realize that there has been a problem, well, mental illness, <laughs> they're, they're just like in the dark ages, you know, they say, somebody's mentally ill, oh my God, that's a dirty word, you know? And that's the way they were, and I couldn't live with them. They knew that you had been in mental hospitals, is that right? Well, they didn't know at first, and I had gone to Traverse City State Hospital because I wanted to continue therapy on an outpatient basis, and when this became common knowledge, then they treated me like I was something different, you know? What about your husband? How did he feel about it? Oh, he didn't feel that way about it, not really, because he's had quite a bit of it in his family. His mother is quite ill. What's the matter with her? I don't know. I'm sure I don't know. But well, approximately. I don't know. She's sick, and she gets... When she's not sick, she's a wonderful person, but when she is sick, she becomes violent and has to be confined. And uh, Jim was out here for several years, and he talked with Dr. Thiel, 
uh, with some of the doctors here and had come to understand it. In fact, he was willing to take therapy himself if he thought it would be in any way beneficial to our relationship. So, he Do you think there was any uh, awareness in him that uh, any connection between your having been hospitalized for mental illness and his mother? I, I don't think so. I, I feel it. I mean, I, I think that he has certain feelings about people being mentally ill because of his mother, but I don't think he realizes it. But you do feel there's some connection? Mm -hmm. That there's some attraction you have mm -hmm. because of this? Uh, he, uh, he's always been the one in the family to take care of his mother, and when he was away from home and he didn't have his mother to take care of and he had no one in his family, and when I came along and was a little bit goofy, I think he appreciated it. Does he like you goofy? Mm-hmm. How about when you're not? He likes me then, too. It's just that he has more of a tendency to take care of me or to, to see that I'm taken care of. And, see that I have what I want or what I need when, I, when I'm upset or disturbed than he does when I'm not. And I like to be taken care of. What was your life like before you got married to him? I mean, immediately before, in the year, less than a year before that time. It was, <laughs> in, I think it was um, the 9th of April I was discharged from UCLA. And I went to Venice. I moved to Venice. And I spent uh, five or six months living on the beach in Venice. And it was wild. <laughs> I drank quite a bit. And I rode quite a few motorcycles and skin diving and water skiing. And there just isn't too much that I didn't try. I just I didn't sleep much, or I didn't eat very often, but I had a ball. Mm -hmm. Did you get in any trouble? Not any serious trouble. I, I guess I could have gotten in serious trouble. Or what do you mean? Well, I was picked up once for possession of narcotics, and, and I told them some weird tale, and they believed me and turned me loose. <laughs> and, uh, I wrecked a car that wasn't mine. I told them that it had been loaned to me, and actually I didn't know who it belonged to. Um, I guess I could have died because I had taken an overdose of sleeping pills. I'm um, not clear. At the time that you wrecked the car? No, or uh, this was at another, another time? At another time. What did you take, and how much was it? I took um, Nimbutal. And I, I think I took 36. 36. That's pretty good. Huh? What happened? I don't know. You mean before or after? I mean as a result of it. Well, I guess I took the pills and I went to bed and somebody telephoned me and while I was on the telephone I lost consciousness. And they transmitted, or they took me to the Santa Monica Hospital and my stomach was pumped there. And uh, but the Santa Monica Hospital wouldn't keep me and they brought me to UCLA. And UCLA wouldn't even talk to them about keeping me. And I was taken to the county hospital, and I was unconscious until the next Wednesday. And then I was discharged, and that's all. Any further attempts? Um, Nothing not that I was that. aware of. <laughs> and then I, well, I shot a man. Um, but I... I what about that? Well, that, I was just angry. He, I had been out, and my children were spending the weekend with me, and he was an addict. And he had broken into the house, and he was wrecking the house, and he picked up one of my small boys and beat him quite badly. And I told him not to, and he did it anyway, so I shot him. And? He didn't do it anymore. What happened? Nothing. Well, what happened to him? Did you hit oh. him? Yeah, I hit him. He bled. <laughs> and he went to the hot. Oh, no, he didn't go to the hospital. He went to the police station. 
His friends came and got him. And I shot his car up, too. And his friends, some friends of his came and got him, and they took him to the police station. And he demanded police protection and so forth. And they told him to go away. And he went to a hospital. And, and then he was arrested for selling narcotics. And I went to see him. I went to the, in fact, I took him cigarettes. I told him I was sorry I hurt him. Because I think you know, if I'd have been any better shot, I probably could have killed him. How'd you miss? I was shooting him with a rifle. And I just, it was too big. I just didn't, I just don't shoot that well. I'm not in the habit of shooting people. It's not an easy habit to get into. No, I wouldn't want to do it again. Was there any other trouble before you got married? Oh, there was another shooting, and that was in December, just about... It was the 5th of December, and I was married the 28th, or the 23rd. And, uh, this one I had no connection with at all, but a man was shot in my apartment, a policeman, in fact. And that was... I never did fully understand what happened, except that they had been drinking, and had invited some juveniles in to drink with them, girls, and... Uh, one thing led to another, and one policeman was shot. Another one had his head split open. And he ended up, I think, with six policemen being fired, and, and they put me in jail, and I never could figure out why, except that they didn't want any stories going around about what had actually happened while they tried to straighten it up. And then they had an investigation in April of the next year, and, and I was subpoenaed to go then. And I didn't appear, and they put me in jail again for contempt of court, but they didn't keep me for any length of time, and that was all. Then I got married. And you survived that also? The marriage? Yeah. Yeah. So Actually, it, that was an impulsive thing to do, because I, I didn't know him, and after I married him, I couldn't remember his name. I met him on a Sunday, and uh, this girl that I had been living with said, this guy's going to get drafted. You got kids, why don't you marry him? And then he can claim dependence. So I did. I married him the next day. That's the way you married the previous times. It was rather quickly, as I yeah. recall. But this one seems to have turned out different. Mm -hmm. How come? Because, he, because he's, a, he's a different person. Because I like him. I don't know. It doesn't sound quite sufficient to explain it. Because he doesn't care what I did before, he doesn't say, well, like my mother, she'll, she'll say, well, if you hadn't done this and you hadn't done that, and I couldn't forget anything that I've ever done because my mother always reminds me, but he doesn't care. He figures what I'd done in the past was unfortunate, so let's forget it and work towards doing better in the future. And if things come up, like uh, anything, if I'd gone out and written bad checks, and maybe three months after I was married, these checks started appearing, he'd say, well, we'll take care of them the best we can. Let's don't let it happen again. And let's find out why it did so it won't happen again. That's so, why. does it happen again? No. What's happened to the... Uh kind of life that you led, the kind of behavior that you had up until the time you got married? Well, prior to my marriage, I, I didn't do anything like other people do, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I ate and bathed regularly and brushed my teeth and things like that, but as far as being scheduled, now I get up in the morning and cook his breakfast and see that my children are ready for school, that my children didn't live with me. I didn't want them. I didn't have any intentions of being a mother. And I, I don't know, I, before I do something, now I might still, I'd still like to go out and, and drink and have a ball. I enjoy drinking, I like to drink. But I think now if I drink tonight, in the morning I'll have a headache and maybe I won't be able to iron. And I have to iron because Michael has to have clean shirts for school. <laughs> I never thought that way three years ago because I didn't have to. I didn't have any responsibilities. What about drugs of various sorts? Has that changed any? As I recall, you were, you had by the 
age of 21, pretty well run through all the drugs there are. Uh, I don't use anything. Nothing. In fact, uh, Dr. Theo had been trying to get me to take tranquilizers, and I even, I just do not, if I can get along without them. And I think that I can. So no alcohol? Uh, six months. For the first six months after I was married, I didn't change too much. I was um, still having a ball because I didn't really feel married. I don't think I did. Uh, I don't know. I was hospitalized here for 30 days in March of 1959. And, uh, and he, my husband continued to, to, he came to see me every day. Uh, and I finally decided, well, if he's married, I guess I ought to be. <laughs> I, I think that had a lot to do with it, the fact that he he wasn't repulsed by anything that I had done. I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. I can't explain the feeling, I, because I don't know what it is. I just like him. Mm. Well, it sounds most unusual for you. You always, in the past, if a whim hit you, a whim was as good as doing it. And then I can't do that. Uh, because I, well, I just can't. I have things that have to be done. And I have two children that have to be raised. And nobody else is going to do it. And I don't want my children raised the way I was. Oh, I just won't have it. I want them to be emotionally secure, stable, healthy, well-adjusted young men. I don't want them to be a couple of nuts. What made you a nut? Well, I imagine I did it pretty much by myself. No, you were suggesting that it was in the way you were raised. I didn't mean to suggest that. I'm sure you did. Well, I'm sure I didn't, okay. because I think I was raised as well as... I I have several brothers and sister, and if there isn't anything wrong with them, we were all raised the same. Is any of your impulsivity left? Has it all disappeared since you've gotten oh, married? No. Oh, I still do things impulsively. But I, it's, I've curbed it a great deal. I, uh, if I'm angry, I, I say, damn it, I don't go out and try to blow up the house. And if somebody hurts my feelings, I don't... I, uh, you don't shoot them down? No, I don't shoot them. <laughs> How about motorcycles? Well, not th that really isn't fair because I like motorcycles, and I, I, lots of normal, average, everyday people like motorcycles and enjoy them. My husband rides a motorcycle. <laughs> I, I had a motorcycle accident last night. Oh. Uh, it wasn't very serious. It, actually, it wasn't my fault because the throttle got stuck, but I hit a fence. What happened? Uh, I wrecked the motorcycle. And you. Apparently, we're unhurt. Hurt. I've got a few bu bruises, you know, but uh, I didn't get hurt. Were you going fast? About 70 miles an hour, 65, 70 miles an hour. Congratulations. Hmm. Yeah, the highway patrolman said he didn't think it was possible. He wanted me to do it again. <laughs> so a little of your old self then remains, well, just to remind you that you're still there? I have a lot to... Uh, to overcome, I, or I, I don't know that I really do. Well, when you say overcome, it uh, reminds me that uh, there's something we haven't talked about, which is your treatment. Now, you've been in treatment for a long time. How many years has it been? Periodically, since I was 14 years old. But actual treatment, treatment where I really wanted something from it, yeah. it's been a very short time. How long? Three and a half, maybe four years. Mm -hmm. And where I really buckled down to treatment has been even shorter, maybe two and a half years. Do you know, I don't know if this is true, but I don't think that you can just go into therapy with any doctor. And I've had dozens. Some of them were real dolls. <laughs> but I, I think, I think you have to feel something with your doctor. Have something more than just a, you have to have some kind of a relationship that's, 
different than just talking to somebody. I've had three here at UCLA, three doctors, and uh, one of them, I don't know, I could talk to him for hours, and I never felt that he understood what I was talking about. And another one, I didn't feel anything towards him except antagonism. I wanted to belt him one every time he opened his mouth. And then Dr. Thiel. And I've continued with Dr. Thiel. <clears throat> I feel that any great changes that, that have been made or anything that I've accomplished has been due to my therapy with Dr. Thiel. Of course, that would leave out your husband, who has also no, played a part. No, I was going to add that. You mean that. in treatment? Mm -hmm. in, in treatment. Official treatment, at any rate. What's made the difference with Dr. Thiel? I trust him. I know he wouldn't lie to me, for one thing. For a while, uh, I didn't, I, when I talked to a doctor, I always wondered what you thought of it. Uh, when they would say, uh, do this, I think you should do this, or I think you should do that, then I'd think, well, if Dr. Storer was saying it, what would he say? And then I found out that wouldn't work. I don't know where I got confused there. <laughs> but finally, I, when I got to Dr. Thiel, then he was all my doctor. I actually resented his other patients. <laughs> I got over that. But um, I trust him and I believe him. And I just feel that he's good for me. How would you say you've changed? I think I'm getting old. Uh, that's no, I'm slowing down. I'm not as nervous you're as I used to be. You're how old now, 24? I was 25 in 25. January. 25. Mm -hmm. I think you're getting old. I, uh, I've learned to face responsibilities rather than running from them, continually running. I still have a desire to run <laughs> when something's disagreeable. <clears throat> in fact, I still do occasionally. Huh. I'm able to think things out. If I, if something happens that I might want to react impulsively to, quite often I can sit and think it out before doing it and therefore not do it at all. So, what's going to become of you? That's a foolish question in a way. I don't expect a specific answer, but uh, what do you think of the future? Well, First of all, I think I should continue therapy. I, I like to think that I've accomplished a great deal, but there's still a lot more. Well, I think in time, I'll just <laughs> be another old lady, <laughs> just like everybody else. In all of this, uh your mother plays some part. When we talked years ago, I don't know whether you recall it or not, you mentioned some of your feelings about her and about your father. What's with that now? I don't understand what you mean. Hmm? I don't understand what you mean. What are your feelings towards your mother now? Are they the same? Are they different? I if they're know. different, how are they? Whatever you feel. I get along fine. My mother's a very nice person. I don't know what to say about my mother. I really don't. I, people say, is your mother nice? And I say, yeah, my mother's nice. I, I, I don't know. I've never, I've never been disrespectful to my mother. I've never said no to my mother. I've never denied her anything that she ever asked me. I don't know what to say about her. I think possibly I dislike some of the things she does. But I don't know that I could say I dislike. I think I do. I'm not sure that I do. I don't know what. It's very confusing, my feelings about my mother. And I don't really care to talk about it. Have you seen your father recently? No. Is he completely out of the picture? Mm -hmm. And has been for years. Yes. He has no contact with your mother or with you or with your brothers or sisters? No. I know where he is, though. Are you I'd curious like to go about see him. him? Oh, yeah. How come? 
I like my dad. He's a pretty nice guy. Or he used to be. I once asked you whether you're like him. Yeah, my mother says I'm just like him. In what way? I don't know. Whatever it is, it isn't good. <laughs> Why is it? Because my mother will say, that no good so-and-so, and you're just like him. So I don't guess it's very good, whatever it is. Is she still saying that? Oh, yeah. Does she well, I think it's gotten to be a habit. Does she feel you've changed any? Yes. Mm hmm? She comments on the fact that I'm calmer, you know, I'm not always jumping around and hollering and ranting and raving and so forth. You see her now? She likes the idea that I wear dresses once in a while, instead of Levi's and motorcycle boots. Yes, you uh, do look different from the way you used to. May I smoke? Yes. What's happened to the Levi's? Nothing. I, I just don't care to wear them. You're wearing heels, stockings. One day my youngest son asked me if I was a boy or a girl. And it really bothered me. Yesterday he asked me if he was a girl when he was born because he had curly hair. <laughs> and I didn't know that kids got so confused about things like that. Didn't you? No. And besides, I, I go to PTA meetings and, and in the neighborhood I live in, the women just don't wear Levi's and I'm a woman. No. And my husband doesn't like it either. You seem to be comfortable in women's clothes. Not really. What's the trouble? You I look comfortable now as you sit here. Yeah. I feel comfortable with you. But um, a lot of times, if I have to go someplace, or like to a PTA meeting or something, I'm very uncomfortable. But if I'm out riding a motorcycle in the dirt, I feel as comfortable as anything. Do you feel when you go to a PTA meeting as if you're in competition or losing the competition with the other mothers? I don't feel like I belong there. I'm always afraid I'll say something wrong or, uh, I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't feel comfortable around other adult women. Have you ever? Do you know, do you know what I think it is? I, I hear these women talk about They've done this and they've done that. Or did you hear about so-and-so? Her daughter's going to have a baby and she's not married. What a terrible thing. And I think, well, you old bag. <laughs> it isn't so terrible. And I just think, how funny. I, I, I would just like to picture the, the look on her face if I told her how many children I've had or how many times I've been married or something like that. They would have trouble believing you, wouldn't they? I don't think they believe it at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not proud of it. Not really. I, I just... I just think about maybe so-and-so's daughter that's going to have the baby that isn't married, and I wonder if her mother knows why she's having the baby. And why don't they try and understand it rather than criticizing her or condemning her for it? Our time is up. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.